Although the word Jabulani means be happy, it only made one player happy. Ika Casillas called it a horrible ball. Gianluigi Buffon called it absolutely inadequate. And Lionel Messi called it a complicated ball. But only one player called it a great ball. So who was this one player who could use this football and what was his secret source? From the Tiento and T model football used in the first World Cup in 1930 to the synthetic Al Rila used recently in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, the World Cup has seen many goated balls. But none is more notorious than the 2010 World Cup ball, the Jabulani. So I went back in time, back to 2010, to unearth the Jabulani. The Jabulani was created by Adidas exclusively for the 2010 World Cup tournament in South Africa. Adidas has created World Cup footballs since the 70s, so they were pretty experienced with this. They designed the Jabulani to capture the essence of the first World Cup on African soil. So let's start with the colors. The 11 different colors on the ball represented the 11 unique official languages of South Africa, the 11 players of a team, and the 11 South African communities that form the country. Next, the name Jabulani was coined from Zulu, which is a language spoken by the majority of South Africans. And as said before, it means celebrate, or to rejoice, or to be happy. All of these helped create an African vibe around the ball. That said, the ball didn't just showcase the vibe of South Africa or Africa as a whole, it also tried something different in the aerodynamics department. With a mind-blowing first of its kind, grip and groove technology developed by Adidas in conjunction with engineers from Loughborough University in the UK, this ball was designed with only 8th heat fused 3D panels, despite the average football having as many as 32 panels. The skin of the ball was surrounded by grooves, which were almost unnoticeable, making the ball perfectly round and rough, and thus making it very fast and move almost unpredictably. To put things in perspective, I recall playing with uncontrollable balloon-like footballs as a kid. It was fun, but even Paul the Octopus couldn't predict the trajectory of that ball. It was all over the place. And that's why most players found it difficult to accept the ball. The engineers of the Jabalani were proud of their design and called it the most consistent football ever manufactured. But goalies hated it because they couldn't predict its movement as it seemed to slow mid-flight, leading to some strange goals. Although the goalkeepers were hit worse, outfield players weren't having a good time with the ball either. They found it extremely difficult to apply some spin to it, thus making the ball more unpredictable. Speaking about the Jabulani, Brazilian striker Luis Fabiano said, It's weird. All of a sudden it changes trajectory on you. It's like it doesn't want to be kicked. It's incredible. It's like someone is guiding it. You are going to kick it and it moves out of the way. I think it's supernatural. It's very bad. Former Brazilian, Real Madrid and Man City player, Robinho, who was known for his flashy style of play, called out the engineers who designed the ball, saying, For sure, the guy who designed this ball never played football, but there is nothing we can do. We have to play with it. Nevertheless, Robinho wasn't alone in his assessment of the engineers involved in the creation of the ball. Ex-Liverpool midfielder Craig Johnston had some harsh words for the engineers in an open letter to FIFA. Whoever is responsible for this should be taken out and shot for crimes against football. Oh, by the way, Craig Johnston designed Adidas's Predator football, so I can understand why he was that up in arms about this football. But if he was that ticked off by this football, I can only imagine how the goalkeepers who had to deal with this ball must feel about it. Enter former Inter Milan goalkeeper Julio Cesar. Cesar had dealt with different footballs throughout his professional career, but none felt more unprofessional than the Jabulani. The football is horrible. It is like one of those you buy in the supermarket, Julio Cesar claimed. Cesar's claims were corroborated by Italian goalkeeping maestro Gianluigi Buffon, who said this about the ball. The new model is absolutely inadequate, and I think it's shameful letting us play such an important competition where a lot of champions take part with a ball like this. Anyway, despite the negative reviews, some players had a different take. The Brazilian legend, Kaka, said, For me, contact with the ball is all important, and that's just great with this ball. Former Germany midfielder Michael Ballack was full of praise for the football, branding it fantastic, while also declaring that the ball did exactly what it wanted it to. His Chelsea teammate and Chelsea legend Frank Lampard shared in his sentiments calling the Jabulani a very strong ball, true to hit. 
but I can't say I'm surprised since these players were on the payroll of Adidas. But the opinions of the cheerleaders of the Jabalani didn't matter much as the World Cup began in earnest. According to Optostats, the 2010 World Cup had the most misplaced passes of the last four World Cups thanks to the Jabulani. Craig Johnston also offered that, because of how unstable the Jabulani was, the 2010 World Cup was denied at least 10 goals. He also attributed Lampard's two shots that hit the crossbar against Germany to the effects of the ball. You can call that karma taking its course against Lampard for his previous comment. Nevertheless, despite the controversy surrounding the Jabulani, only one player understood this ball in its entirety, and as a result, he used it more effectively. If you still need to guess who that player is, let me tell you, it is Diego Forlan. Coming into the 2010 World Cup, Forlan was in fine form, netting 28 goals across all competitions for Atletico Madrid. Prepared to represent Uruguay at the World Cup with all he had, he focused all his attention on the Jabulani. Three months before the tournament kicked off, Forlan got the Jabulani ball from Adidas and practiced with it. While other players complained bitterly about the bizarre nature of the new ball, Forlan spent a good amount of time wrapping his head around it in a bid to understand its true nature. Sebastian Abreu, his Atletico Madrid teammate at the time, confirmed this saying, at Atletico Madrid, he stayed after the training, practicing moves with the ball in motion and free kicks. Like a scientist testing a theory, Forlan tested the ball's flight pattern meticulously, using free kicks, crosses, long passes, you name it, as he tried to understand how he could strike the ball best to achieve the necessary dip and swerve, that was the stuff of great goals. Mind you, Forlan was a knuckleball specialist. A good percentage of his over 200 career goals were screamers from outside the box, so he was a student of the science involved in the motion of the ball, and the Jabulani was no exception. Anyway, with the Jabulani tamed and under his control, it was time to showcase his mastery of the ball for Uruguay at the 2010 World Cup. Uruguay began the competition against France, who were finalists at the 2006 World Cup, which was infamous for the Zizou headbutt. It was a cagey affair, but Forlan already showed signs of what he had in store for everyone. He tested Hugo Lloris several times, striking the ball sweetly on those occasions, although the game ended in a stalemate. But their next game against the host nation South Africa gave Forlan his chance to demonstrate his proficiency for the Jabulani. With the score tied at nil-nil, Forlan received the ball from way outside the box, recognized his moment, and unleashed a ferocious shot that swerved and dipped, grazing the crossbar on its way into the back of the net. And the goalkeeper, he was rooted to the spot, completely bamboozled by the flight path of the ball. It was no coincidence, Forlan knew the ball would do that if he struck it then and there. Then in the second half, Forlan made it two, firing his penalty to the roof of the net after a red card to South Africa's goalie, Ituku Ne. He then capped up a stellar night with a fantastic pre-assist who picked out his partner in crime, Luis Suarez, with such precision as you would expect from a Zabi Alonso, Xavi Hernandez or Paul Scholes. It was clear at that moment that this ball was Forlan's baby and he could control it at will. Moving on, Forlan couldn't replicate his magic against Mexico in the final match of the group stages and the second round against South Korea. He instead left Luis Suarez to steal the show in both games. However, in the quarterfinals against Ghana, he had another glorious moment with the Jabilani. After Sully Muntari put Ghana 1-0 up in the first half, all thanks to the erratic character of the Jabulani, it was Forlan's turn to enchant the ball. He struck the ball in such a beautiful manner that it coiled around and avoided Ghana's goalkeeper Richard Kingston's fingertips at the right moment. Uruguay then went on to book their place in the semis after Suarez's infamous handball, but that's a story for another day. At the semis, Uruguay faced the star-studded Netherlands with the likes of Robin van Persie, Wesley Snyder, Ian Robin, Giovanni van Bronckhorst, but with Uruguay missing the services of their star man Luis Suarez, all eyes were on Forlan and his ally on the pitch, the Jabulani. As expected, Forlan didn't disappoint. He struck a fierce shot that glanced over the fingertips of Martin Stekelenburg and into the net to cancel out Van Bronckhorst's incredible goal. Unfortunately, his exploits with the Jabalani weren't enough to carry his team to the final. Yet, the romance between Falan and the Jabulani hadn't ended. There was still the third-place playoff and Falan had one last chance to dance with his bride. 
and indeed they did some dancing. He let loose a well-timed volley that ricocheted off the tuff and into the back of the net. The goalkeeper stunned. The goal was adjudged the best goal in the World Cup, earning him the goal of the tournament award, a perfect icing on his Jabulani cake. Fulan finished the tournament with five solid goals, which earned him the golden ball and the golden boot. When asked how he managed this much success with the Jabulani, a ball that many wished was never spoken of ever again, he said this, There are no mysteries here. A lot of practice, a lot of training, and again, a lot of practice. I got lucky, and the Jabulani behaved very well back then, and we got along great. The Jabulani perfectly embodied the saying, one man's meat is another man's poison. It was a hot mess to many, but a pleasant dream to others, particularly Diego Forlan and knuckleball specialists. That said, do you think a ball can actually make such a difference in a game?